Sean? I'm, I normally would. I go most years, but I have to be in Alaska because we're starting oh. a project. So with, where did where'd you guys get this fish from? Where would you get this, this um, mullet from? Ormond Lagoon Waterway. Ormond Lagoon Waterway. Formerly and he was dead Oxford when you got him, right? Industrial oh, this guy's alive? Yeah, he's we alive. caught him alive. Oh, sweet. This guy caught him. Well, we caught him alive because. So if you take me to 25 lakes, I don't think I'll miss him. <laughs> 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 if I can get four out of this, I'm thing, just saying. You see it. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. What were your uh, collection methods? Um, I used a cast net and got that one. I got one on a sabiki with. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I put a sabiki out there with a couple of pieces of dough on the hooks. And they kind of nibbled on that. And I, instead of hooking a weight at the bottom, I put a bag of oatmeal and kind of let that chum up the line. And oh, cool. They kind of picked at that pretty decently for a little bit. And then, um, yeah, the rest of them was just throwing it out there with the cast net and seeing what I could pull in. And so, Mark, you do morphometrics first, and you do gross photography and gross visual inspection externally and you're looking for lesions and anything else like eye clarity or anything just like general stuff yeah I mean if this fish had been brought up dead we would try and determine um, how recently it had died so we'd look at you know uh, uh, the condition of the eye how red the gills are mm -hmm. you know if it mm -hmm. smelled or not, um, <clears throat> and you know, it's uh, it really is tough to uh, age these fish once they've died. Uh, so it's it's pretty much kind of a ballpark figure what we're doing. <clears throat> uh, so what would you guess this guy was? What do you mean? As Age. far, oh, no, I, I was saying as far as the amount of autolysis. Oh, 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 oh okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Age, okay. you know, uh, you know, I would say at least uh, a couple years. Yeah, you know, I was maybe guess three. Yeah, because uh, it's a pretty good sized mullet. Uh, <clears throat> but I don't know if anybody's done any oral with uh, mm. testing on, on uh, mullet. mullet. I can ask the ex expert in a minute. He'll, he'll tell me. So you're saying so skin, gills, and liver are the main targets? For, um, for Stella McMillan, who's going to be assessing uh, pesticide load, she just requested two organs, gill and liver. Okay. So... Uh, We'll send her that. For me, for histology, I'll take it pretty much everything. Okay. Do you always get such an audience for your necropsies? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that dogfish, it's amazing. <laughs> Really depends on the species, you know. <laughs> when uh, mola mola, everybody's there. <laughs> oh, I would be there. <laughs> I actually turned down a mola mola. Really? Necropsy uh, a couple of weeks ago. There was one that came up in Monterey, but uh, I I didn't have uh, I didn't have time. They're supposed to be loaded, right? They loaded with parasites. Yes. And stuff? Yeah. Loaded with parasites. Uh, <laughs> you know. Um, but as far as audience size, yes, it just depends on the species of fish and the size, you know? For example, we had a, a nine foot great white that came up on the beach uh, in the middle of June. And uh, for that one, yeah, we had, we had a big crowd. Where was it? It, uh, it stranded in the Santa Cruz area. Okay. So we were lucky though. We took it to the uh, uh, the Long Marine Lab. The Fish and Wildlife has a, mm -hmm. uh, a necropsy center right near there. Um, so we could we could limit the uh, the number of people. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> the looky loose. Yeah. 
but usually for uh, for white sharks, you get a big crowd. Yeah. So we've, we've actually had a pretty unusual string of white shark strandings over the last year and a half. Um, I've <coughs> I've need crop seed five great whites since last April. Do so you have ideas of why there's so many? It's it's uh, pretty varied, you know. Two were hit by boat. They had right. hmm. uh, big propeller wounds. Oh, uh, juveniles. Pretty much the uh, they were nine, ten feet. Mm -hmm. So big sharks, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. six to eight hundred pounds, but still. You know, you open them up, and you can't find the gonad, you know? Yeah. So, big sharks, but um, really... Immature. <laughs> immature. Um, yeah, it's, it's funny. I have a pretty tough time finding gonads in, uh, in sharks. They're easy to sex because... They either have claspers or they don't on their pelvic fins. Mm -hmm. But then once you open them up, uh, they have to be really old <coughs> for you to actually see uh, a hmm. grossly visible um, gonad. That's so just, it's just the water's cold, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> yesterday was pretty surprising <laughs> in that uh, this brown uh, smoothhound shark was small you know it was only two and a half feet but that shark had a large ovary with developing follicles so mm. that one <coughs> I was really surprised to, to find the ovary I keep thinking somebody's coming to the doors the fish flopping in the, <laughs> in, in the cooler So you guys said people started noticing the die off a week ago? On Friday. Okay, so less than a week ago, okay. I'm hoping, so environmental health was notified the first day and I got on to them starting Friday. So I'm hoping they went out and collected DO. They usually collect for fecal indicator bacteria. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm hoping they at least took some physical chemistry and could have some helpful DO readings from closer to the event. Have you seen any endocrine effects on sharks or near shore? You know, uh, I really can't tell you because uh, all my work is, is kind of end stage as a pathologist mm -hmm. now. Um, <clears throat> there's, there's all a suspicion when there are large die-offs like the leopard sharks that, that these die-offs uh, occur during uh, or following heavy rainfall years. Mm -hmm. So there's always a lot of runoff. So they get exposed to low salinity conditions but there's also this huge contaminant load that comes into South San Francisco Bay. Mm -hmm. So the thought is that uh, they're being immunocompromised, mm -hmm. and that's why they're getting these protozoal infections and dying. But you know, uh, by the time I see them, there's there's really uh, no easy way for me to to assess that. Stella that we got fresh fish. You need to get your clownfish uh, an anemone, you know? Yeah, yes. <laughs> I agree. That's that's for my people. Because I'm clearly much too important to possibly deal with such things. <laughs> my technician was like, I'm bring the fish in for my house. I'm bring the fish in. Okay, wait, who's gonna take care of them? Like, It'll be fine. It'll just put them in your lap. Wait, what? <laughs> so I think she 
I wouldn't say I wouldn't use the term resents me, but there's a little bit of. So can we, we move the fish somewhere else now? I see. So this fish doesn't belong to you. It's an orphan. <laughs> right? Don't know where it came from. You're a California school. You really should have native species in here rather than, you know, clownfish. Uh, captive raised, clown. though. Captive bred. <laughs> I'm just going to go on record to say that. <laughs> we have stickleback in our office. Yeah. See? Stickleback. <laughs> there you go. Come on, Sean, step it up. <laughs> They're pretty flashy. Was it, uh, our, uh, <laughs> our gambuzi a, a, a naturalized <laughs> now or something? Or what, can we, what else hey, can hey, we hey, have? Hey, hey. <laughs> Well, at least in California, there's, there's no risk of people releasing their clownfish. <laughs> no, no lionfish uh, established, no lionfish colonies establishing. Uh, this, <clears throat> these friends of ours in Hawaii, this woman used to work for the, the Waikiki Aquarium. Oh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and one day she and her husband were, were snorkeling. Uh, uh, and they came upon these clownfish sitting in this anemone in, on the sand flat in Hawaii. And there are also no clownfish in Hawaii. So uh, it was clearly someone who had given up yep. uh, and then decided to uh, free their clownfish. <laughs> But she could tell this was a, a mated pair, so she you know. took them home and... Oh, she, she got them. She picked them up. Oh, cool. Right. And she took them home and she started nice breeding baby. clownfish. Oh, really? Right. Oh, interesting. <laughs> and uh, because she had this expertise from working in the Waikiki Aquarium. And uh, so she became... This uh, commercial vendor for clownfish. Uh, eventually, all the big operators in Florida took over, yep. and uh, so she had to move on to to other fish species. But uh, that's how she got her start. I had my students over at um, uh, on the Big Island uh, at the um, Hilo campus. Man, they have such a massive mariculture facility out there. It's insane. And like 90% of it is to supply spat for the West Coast oyster, oyster oh, wow. um, uh, industry. Because they, they have all that, uh, you know, access to cold water. Yeah. Um, is, and um, man, they just, it's just culturing, culturing all kinds of rotifers and, and algal species and they just feed them in these huge bags. I mean, it's acres and acres. It's an incredible production. Oh. And then when they get the the larvae to the right size, they just throw them on a, you know, 747, 767. They fly them up to Oregon or Washington uh -huh. and that's what they're using to to combat the uh, ocean acidification and the, the failure to uh, settle problem. Uh. That works when you have no... Uh, no, no uh, carbon tax. <laughs> no, they, they do some exotics at that. They do. Facility. They do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they actually have a, a new room. It's probably about the size of this building that they're doing a lot of um, ornamental stuff. Or, I, don't, I don't know how much they're doing it full bore, but they're doing a lot of experiments with different ornamental species. At least they were, you know, a year and a half ago. They might have might have gone into full production. But um, yeah, so they kept saying, hey, anybody wants to do a master's? Free man, I mean, basically, master's paid for. You have to work, uh, you know, you have to do mariculture, but um, free ride. They have so much to need for trained technicians and stuff. Really cool.
he's a really well-fed mullet. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really, he's got all this, all this adipose tissue in his abdomen. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> I guess before the fish kill, they were doing really well, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. You know, if you're a, if you're a, a planktivore, you know, yeah, there's no problem. A really, it's a really fat fish. <laughs> so fat is a kind of a, a non-specific condition factor we do look at in in fish. Um, you know. <clears throat> cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the heart is kind of interesting in that <clears throat> in uh, my day job is, is working with cultured white sea bass, the Carlsbad hatchery. And what we see in uh, some of our hatchery fishes is a defect that specifically involves the, the bulbous arteriosis, this, this third section of the heart that leads to the ventral aorta. Um, uh, I volunteer at the White Sea Bass Pens here in Chim Islands. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, you know, I, uh, did you help them treat? Uh, they had a pretty bad case of uh, gill flukes last I, month. I haven't been over there this year at all, actually. Um, I participated in their, their the, was it the um, microchip uh, fish program that they had where they were turning into sea bass heads? Mm. Oh, right, right. And I won a lot of prizes. I turned in a fish <laughs> and ended up having like 15 years worth of data on it. Oh, so cool. I, it's a really old fish. So this one we can sex. This one is uh, female. That's the ovary right mm. here. Okay. Um, this guy. Yeah. So it is a, uh, it's a, it's a sexually mature fish. Um, this is a liver. Uh, <clears throat> because it's not a carnivore, it has a much more complicated uh, intestinal tract. Hmm. It's like the difference between, um, you know, a lion and a cow uh, or a horse. Uh, a cow will have, and a horse, they're eating plant material, so it takes much longer to digest that material, so the, hmm. the intestinal tract is much longer and they have to pack in all these loops to get all the, the nutrition out of that plant material. Whereas, <clears throat> you know, like a shark has a very short GI tract. It's a stomach, a duodenum, spiral colon, and, and that's it. So, very well fed. <laughs> so, <clears throat> um, So it's an older fish, so, <clears throat> you know, uh, there is a chance we might see kind of chronic exposure lesions. Um, On the liver or all over? Well, in the liver and in the kidney. You know, those are the two kind of easy organs uh, we would look for. I mean, tumors uh, you can see in any organ, but uh, liver and kidney are... are solid organs uh, hmm. it, it's uh they're pretty easy to, to see and evaluate i'm gonna move this back over here i think that was a pretty common size across the collection i guess as far as what we were seeing too of this fish yeah. right about there maybe a little smaller uh -huh. than the average but somewhere right in that range <laughs> yeah they're a decent size so, doesn't the federal government have boats and seines? And, uh, <laughs> we do, but we don't, we don't want to go in the water one and the and the boat wouldn't have really, we had a we good certainly. approach at it. Yeah, that water that came out with was like anything you want to get trucking through. We got a boogie out. 
Yeah. Yeah, if you guys have to take off and do work that you're actually paid to do, <laughs> it's going to be uh, a little slow going here you know, as I uh, go through these fish. So what are you looking for next? Are you going to extract like the lizard? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, I'll take some pictures. I'll take um, a chunk of liver for... Oh, just a subsample, not the whole thing. Yeah, for histology, um, we want to fix what well. So the th biggest sample we'll take is, is, you know, a centimeter thick. And uh, that'll allow the formula to go all the way through it. Uh, so unless it's a... A small fish, we, we almost never take the whole organ. Hmm. Um, hmm. So I'll, I'll take a uh, small sample for histo, small sample for um, the pyrethroid assessment, and then uh, I'll run and use your hood and go ahead and start preserving. Uh, yeah, stick, start sticking tissues in. Um, formalin. Um, the other thing on, on the gonad, um, some of the, the chemicals that they're exposed to um, are endocrine dis disruptors. Mm -hmm. And you can actually see um, sex reversal or, or <coughs> sex change in, in fish that are exposed to this. Um, A couple decades ago, a person in the lab I was in at UC Davis, she was studying this 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 uh, this herbicide that Caltrain Caltrans would routinely spray on the side of roads, and, uh, and so we did exposures in the lab, and uh, yeah, we could find uh, exposed Japanese madaka with. Uh, I think it was males, and you could see mm -hmm. uh, oocytes developing in these testes. Huh. So, if we find any testicular tissue in in that ovary, then that'll be a, a good indicator too. You know, mullet is kind of a bland <laughs> fish, no? <laughs> I've eaten a few in my day, and uh, I've heard they're not bad. Yeah, you really need needs a lot of condiments, you know, to make it worthwhile yeah. or batter, um, you know. I am not opposed to, to eating my necropsy specimens, but usually I'm selective. You know? <laughs> you know, like a couple years ago, we had these white sea bass in quarantine in Carlsbad, and they were killed by the same protozoa that's killing the sharks in San Francisco Bay. But the protozoa only go up the nose and attack the brain, so I had no problem with <laughs> The muscle tissue's good. <laughs> having that for dinner. But who knows what's in this tissue sample if it's been in that drainage for a while. I mean, it, it's certainly not bothering the fish a whole lot, you know. Really, I mean, all this for us is we're, we're concerned about the Tidewater Gobi. You know, Ormond Lagoon is one of the most important habitats for Tidewater Gobi. See, it's a very narrow focus. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a whole Species specific. <laughs> there's a whole ecosystem you should be uh, concerned about, yeah. not well, just well, these, yeah, these gobies, you know? But, yeah, but uh, so the gobies are, are threatened, but not on the endangered species list, right? No, they are. Yeah. Oh, they are? Yeah. We may, yeah. They're, so, 
how big a process is it going to be for you to get gobies added to your um, collection permit? Not, not too bad, actually. So we, we can do that. So when we have, depending on what we find in these samples, we could just develop a plan, a sample plan. Uh -huh. Whoa, he almost made it out. He wants to be neck rusted. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Apparently. He's like, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> can I go next? Mm -hmm. um, so we can do it. Sits in the watershed, sits like right next to it. Sits in the, yeah. yes, in the estuary. <laughs> so certainly a source of lots of different worlds. So um, what contaminants are associated with uh, the Superfund site? Yeah, it was an old metals recycling Mostly heavy state. metals. Right, so they were very, not very discerning on what they accepted into the recycling facility. So, you know, they accepted some stuff that had radioactive material at one point, all different kinds of stuff. Um, and so the bulk of, so there's a giant slag pile that sits right in the lagoon. And so that stuff was kind of been, you know, sloughing off into the system. When EPA did their analysis, uh, when they did their um, remedial investigation, and that kind of, you know, they did a whole suite of sampling of water, sediment, biota. Throughout the system, we authorized take of gobies for that. And so they looked at, they, they, they did some analyses with the gobies. I think they were looking at tissue levels of different things. So they're trying to figure out what to do about that site now. So metals is still uh, is another stressor just to have in your mind too. So, so there's no ongoing cleanup at that site? They're still trying to figure out Well, it's questions. stabilized. It's stabilized. So, so the pile has been um, partially covered and the slopes have been altered and everything. But um, it's on the candidate Superfund cleanup list. So that's as much as we have at the moment. Very aggressive about 2007 when they did the, the stabilization. That was about a six month endeavor, but nothing significant uh, since then. But it's on the list. It is on the list. So you're saying this is, this is the, the fatty gas <laughs> so, pad? So the, the gas gland is, is, is this uh, counter current mm -hmm. um, vascular mm -hmm. system. Uh, that pulls gas out of the bloodstream, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, this, is, this is so different from, um, you know, all the other fish yeah, I've yeah, seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's know? crazy. Um, this fish also had a huge pneumatic duct from the stomach to the to the um, swim bladder, so uh, huh. it. It may not rely a whole lot on, on this reedy here, this counter current. Uh huh. Uh huh. But <laughs> hey, John. Hey, Mary. 